I must thought they'd bring that to me. Uh huh. Which verse is? It came up on me in that quick. <laughs> Your two story, if you got them all, or? Brian Morton and Nick White. Oh, this the book only has three. Oh. It came up on me in that clear, and still through the. Well, let's just do one and three. For, for yeah. low the days. For low the days. For low the days. Yeah. Yeah. It came up on them for low the days. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Oh how I love Jesus. It's just five. Yeah, I hit demo. Well then. Well, it's whatever for the one. She's probably already up there. <laughs> she may have oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I hope it don't all. I got one that goes above at 3 o'clock. So. Yeah. We're all bashed down. Mm. Supposed to be 23 below zero on Friday morning when he leaves. Like David. You don't need to be up. He said, if his car is old, he's going to have to drive street car to us. <laughs> That's horrible. Because you might wreck it. He said, well, I told her it would be off if I wrecked her new car. Mine could stand a wreck, but not hers. <laughs> but he said, I'm afraid to take my old one. <laughs> That's petty. Well, good evening. It's good to see each one here tonight. This uh, this winter eve, I guess it's. Uh, we're just praying, believing that it's not going to get as bad as they say it's going to get. And before I forget it, Brother Danny wanted me to announce that uh, for any of you got children over in the uh, uh, life center that they're going to go see the lights in Rosal Springs. So if we get out first and you go over and you can't find your uh, <laughs> your children, just hang on because they will be back. And he's not going to let them out. They're going to come back. He's going to bring them all back. So he wanted me to announce that. So as we begin our service now, let, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this this midweek service that we can come and just, uh, Father, just lift up the name of Jesus. So, God, we just pray that you would be in every facet of this service. And for everything that's said and done, we give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us? Let's sing. Let's sing. It came up on a midnight clear. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill toward men, from heaven's all gracious King, the Hey. 
Tonight, would, the, would there be a prayer request on your heart uh, tonight that we want to lift up before the Lord? Okay, remember those unspoken requests. Okay. All right. Remember Clyde Woolridge. Mm. Yes. Remember those. That request. I, I tell you, it's just uh, it's going to be a tough time. For them, uh, from how they'll survive that. Any others? Yes, remember nation. Yes, remember that request. The families lost loved ones. Okay, remember that request. Maybe an unspoken request just with a lift of the hand. Let's all pray. Father, we come to you tonight, and Father, as those prayer requests has been spoken aloud, God, I just pray that you would just go upon each request. Father, you know the need even before we bring them to you, but when we speak those aloud and our brothers and sisters in Christ just come together in agreement with us and, and lift those up to you. So, Father, we just we consider it done. We just give them to you, and we know that even right now you are working on those, and you're right in the midst of those families that, uh, that's troubled. Father, during this time of year, it seems like so many people that sometimes they get depressed and we just get caught up in the frenzy of, uh, of this season. But God, may we all just take time and remember the true reason for the season. It's not about the, the gifts under the tree or any of this other thing, which that's, that's good for having family time together. But God, the greatest gift we have is the gift of your presence in our life. So we thank you for that. And God, we just, uh, we'll never forget that what you did. You come as that baby in a manger to, you came as a great redeemer, as the a horn of salvation for us, as, as Zacharias said. Father, we just pray for this service tonight. God, I just pray that you would speak words through us, I, for, through me, that you would have us to hear. Not my, my words, God, but your words. And I pray that we would just, just take time and just lay aside any distraction and just focus on your word and the message that you have for us. And Father, for everything that's said and done, We'll never fail to give you honor, praise, and glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll take up our offering if, uh, tonight. Uh, Brother Joe, would you, uh, would you bless the offering?
I go when there's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock I know that's able. I go to the rock. Well, I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains, and the mountain stands by me. Well, the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Jesus, that solid rock, I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I hide? Till the storm clouds pass is over, who do I run to? When the winds of sorrow threaten, is there a refuge? In the time of tribulation, when my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock. Will I go to the rock of my salvation? Go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains, and the mountains stand by me. Well, the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Jesus, the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Closer to the day we celebrate the birth of our Savior, we look at the events leading up to this time, which had been prophesied that God would send a Redeemer, Isaiah. I guess is one of the more familiar ones. But it's also, God had promised to send a, a forerunner, someone to prepare the way for the Messiah, the King of Kings, to, to come. So tonight I want to look at a passage of Scripture from Luke chapter 1, where we look at the angel Gabriel had appeared. We know the angel Gabriel had appeared to, to Mary and told her that she was going to be with child, that she was going to be overshadowed with the Holy Ghost, and, and she was going to be with child, never have knowing a man, but conceived by the Holy Ghost. And then we see the angel Gabriel appearing to Zacharias, as he was in the temple doing his priestly duties of uh, burning incense in the temple. And the angel Gabriel appeared to him. You know, there's three angels that's mentioned by name in the Bible. There's Gabriel, there's Michael, and Apollon. Apollon was the angel of the bottomless pit. He was... Maybe Satan himself. But anyway, he was the, uh, the angel of the bottomless pit. But a Michael and Gabriel were God's special messengers. They, they, they were in God's presence. So God sent them, and they were called out by name. I want to read a passage from Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 67. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, <clears throat> for he has visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. 
And as he spake by the mouth of the, his holy prophets, who has it been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, that might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew, waxed strong in spirit, was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. So the prophetic God, voice of God had been, had been silent for 400 years. But now he spoke through Gabriel. He spoke through Elizabeth and, and, and uh, her as, he, as the angel of Gabriel spoke to her and, and told her what was going to happen with her. He spoke through Mary in Mary's song we read in the first part of Luke 1. And now he's speaking through, through Zacharias. Well, when God spoke, it was, about, it was about Jesus. You know the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth, how, how Gabriel appeared to, appeared to Zacharias and, and told him he was going to have him a, a son in his old age. And it's interesting to note that, that God even named the baby. He said his name will be John. So that's, that's an interesting note. He told Mary that she was going to have a son. There wasn't no gender reveal party. The angel of the Lord told them that they were going to have a son. But Zacharias, he had, he had some doubts. He said, how can this be for me? He said, we're in our old age. He had doubts. And you know, that's a common thing that we, we sometimes we let... We let doubt creep into our mind. All through the Bible, you'll read of different places where Moses had doubts. He he couldn't, he said he couldn't speak. Gideon had doubts. He said, show me. He said, with the fleece. Doubting Thomas, he he had doubts. All through through the Bible, we're saying it's nothing that we haven't experienced probably at some time or another in our life that we had, we had some doubt creep in. But if God says it, we, we can take it to the bank. It's going to happen just exactly like God says it's going to happen. And so Zacharias had some doubts. He, he wanted a sign. He said, how do I, how I know that this is going to happen? And the angel Gabriel told him, he said, you won't speak again until the baby is born. So, so Zacharias, he, he was mute. And I believe he was, he was even deaf because when the baby was born, they said the people around his entourage, the people around him said, you're going to name this baby Zacharias, I assume. And I'm paraphrasing this. But Elizabeth said, no, his name will be John. And they looked to Zacharias and they motioned to him. So I believe he was, he was deaf too. And he took a writing tablet and said his name is John. And just like that, he began to speak. So we see that God's plan at work just exactly like he said it was going to do. Well, we want confirmation in our life. We want to be sure. And it's okay to be sure. But if God says it, if God's leading us to it, then he will see us through whatever he's leading us to do. But we want, sometimes we want confirmation. And when we, when we seek that, when we seek confirmation, I've seen it happen time and again. There will be something that God puts in our path that will show us, that will be, confirm what he has asked us to do. There will be a sign that's confirmation 
of what he wants us to do. So God works like that. So he wanted confirmation. And so as Zacharias, as he began to, you have to wonder what his thoughts was when he looked upon the face of that newborn baby. Waited so long. He was up in years. Waited so long to have an hour. And here he had a son born to him in his old age. Can you just imagine? Think about the time if, if you've got children when you looked into the face of a, a newborn baby. Or even now when you look into the face of a newborn baby in such innocence. And imagine what was going through Zechariah's mind and, and Elizabeth as they looked upon this, this baby, their child. So what did Zacharias do as he looked at them? You know, the Bible says the first thing he does, that he blessed God, he praised God for this. He said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So even though here Zacharias had a, a newborn baby, he gave God praise. And he said, he, is, he has visited us. For God has visited us and redeemed his people. You know, even though Jesus hadn't been born yet, Zacharias was, was confident that God's plan would, would come out, that he would send a Messiah, that he would send a king to deliver his people. Now, Zacharias probably never dreamed, he never dreamed that Jesus would have to die to redeem his people. I'm sure that was the farthest thing in Zacharias' mind when he was talking about this, that he would have to die to redeem his people. You know, nine months earlier, Zacharias had doubts that, that his wife would, would have a baby. Yet Zacharias was now confident of God's fulfillment of his promise. His faith had, had grown so much. He had visited and redeemed his people. When we read about visited there, in the Greek translation, that it means that he has met our needs. Now think about that. Jesus has come to meet our needs. And over 2,000 years later, he is still meeting the needs of his people. He has visited us. He has met our needs. He will meet our needs. Whatever needs we have, Jesus will meet our needs. He has visited and read two great benefits of God. He has visited, he's met our needs, and he has redeemed us or ransomed us. Our greatest need in this life is salvation. We have many needs. We have many needs in this life. But the greatest need that we can have is the need for salvation. To have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When we come down to the end of this life, that's all that really matters. If we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We can go through all of our life and accomplish many great things. We can have titles and things, but the greatest thing that we can have is that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Barnes commentary says to and then visited, it says to to look upon. Look upon to know the state of anyone. So to think that God can look down now when we've been visited with Jesus, but he knows us. He knows all about us. He knows the state that we're in. It, it means to look upon 
for the purpose of, of giving help for those in need. You know, we, we think about the things that we go through in this life. And sometimes we may feel all alone. But God is looking down upon us and he knows, he knows our need. He knows it even before we, before we ask him for help in the situations. But when we go to him and we cry out to him and he has compassion upon us and he knows our need. He may not know our wants all the time. And he may not fulfill them, but he knows our need. And another word is alleviating misery. And even though we may be in the lowest of low valleys, but the peace and the calmness that we can feel in the presence of Jesus will help us go through those dark times in their life. And there's not a one of us sitting here tonight that, that hasn't went through times where we're, where we're low in the valley. But we can rest assured that Jesus is right there with us. And how does he alleviate that misery that we may be experiencing? By the peace of God that passes all understanding that he has instilled in us. The peace that we cannot understand but the peace that he, he gives to us, and that peace just, just floods our soul. God looked upon the world. He looked upon the world and, and, and saw its, its misery. And he came to relieve that misery, and he brought salvation. I can't help but just think, as God looks down upon our world today, and we talked about praying for our nation. As God looks down today, he sees us. He sees our nation in its misery. You know, when Jesus on the Mount of Olives before he was crucified, he looked out over Jerusalem and he was heartbroken at the things that were going on in Jerusalem at that time. What What is... What do you think Jesus thinks today when he looks across the world? This beautiful place that he created for us. Put everything in place that we would need. What do you think he is on his mind as, as he looks at our nation today? As, we, as we've turned, the world has turned away from God. God is not important to so many people today. And we can't help but believe that, that he is heartbroken. But we can rest assured. He's going to look down one day in our misery. And he's going to send Jesus back. To bring his church home. To be with him. He looked down. And he sent a Savior to alleviate the misery. The Redeemer was about to appear. So what, what do we think of when we, Zechariah said, He has raised up a horn of salvation. The idea of hath raised up, the tense of those verbs, hath raised up, is as if it already happened. But he's raised up a horn of salvation for the ones that had already gone on. He raised up a horn of salvation for us. A raised horn was a symbol of victory, especially from being oppressed. And a victory in a, a battle, they would, they would raise a horn. It was, it was a sign of a power. Horns of rams was used as, as trumpets. So Zacharias is saying that this child that Mary is carrying 
God will fulfill his plans and there is nothing the enemy can do to thwart those plans. The coming of Jesus the Messiah is a visitation of God to our world. But Jesus wants more than a, a visitation in our life. He wants a habitation in our life. Jesus within us. You know, there was a great expectation. It had been prophesied that there would be a king coming. There was a great expectation. But he was about to come in an unexpected way. I wonder if, if the prophecies that they had studied about sending a king, sending Messiah, I wonder through this period of time, especially the 400 years of God's silence, if, if they haven't grown a little bit complacent and, and maybe even quit looking for the coming Messiah. We've heard it preached that Jesus is coming back for, for many years. And I wonder if, if the world ain't grown a little bit complacent saying it won't happen now. But the Bible tells us in the twinkling of an eye, when we think not that Jesus is going to split the eastern sky, there will be a trumpet blast, and he's coming back. I think the world has grown complacent during this period of time. They think they, they have plenty of time, but we've got no guarantee of the next breath. We got no guarantee of tomorrow. He may come back tonight. He may come back tomorrow. What if he comes back on on the day we celebrate his birthday? Wouldn't that be an awesome thing? But he is coming back. You know, this promise that that Jesus came into the world. He was born as a redeemer, the Messiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The promise is for all people. This plan of salvation is for all people. The horn was a sign of power. A horn blown was a sign of victory in battle. In this light, God is our, our strength and our protector. You know the horns of animals are for their defense. So God in the, as a horn of salvation, Jesus as a horn of salvation is our, is our strength and he's our protector. In Psalms 18 and 2, David said, <clears throat> he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. David used military terms there. And he was, this, he, this was after God had saved him from Saul who was out to kill David. And this was after, he said, he used these military terms. He said, God is his rock that can't be moved. He's a fortress, a place of safety. Doesn't that describe the Jesus that we know? He's our buckler, our shield of protection. A horn of salvation, a symbol of might and power. A high tower above our enemies. He is a horn of salvation because he uses... His power to secure and protect his people. We have a protector in Jesus, the horn of our salvation. And he will defeat our enemies. The last enemy that will be defeated will be death. Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. When he arose from that grave, when he was crucified on that cross, 
put in a barred tomb. But yet he didn't stay there. He arose. Raising the horn of salvation, we will be delivered from our enemies that we might serve him in fear in holiness and in righteousness. That's the reason he raised up this horn of salvation, so that we can serve him without fear. Serve him in holiness and, and righteous living. God's aim is to create holy and righteous people. The good news at Christmas is God has raised up this horn of salvation for his people. He's raised up this horn of salvation and protector and to give us strength for us. Jesus is the great ox horn of salvation for all who call upon his name. Zacharias didn't even know Jesus yet. But he praises him. He said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Before he even said anything about his newborn son, he praised the Lord. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we do the same? Shouldn't we offer God our praises and worship? Zacharias even though he hadn't met Jesus yet. He loved him, and he was passionate about Jesus. We know so much more about Jesus than Zacharias did. And that's why we praise him. That's why we worship him. That's why we come out on a night like this, and, and we honor him with our presence in his presence. We're passionate. We're passionate about Jesus. We're passionate about, about serving him. We know so much more than about Jesus and Zacchaeus did. And everyone does. There's no excuse for not knowing about Jesus. So why the coldness of so many people's heart? When the Bible is plain, and, there, and there's so much, there's so much information out there today. We can, we can, we can hear it. People can hear it, whether they want to or not. But just flipping on the radio, and there, there's things there. There's TV. There's ads. So there's no excuse for not knowing about Jesus. And when we do really dig deep and getting want to know Jesus, then we become passionate about that. After the initial focus on Jesus, the Holy Ghost led Zacharias to, to speak of his newborn son. To speak of him and his place in, in God's plan. But Zacharias had his priorities in order. His priority was serving God and being obedient to him. But he didn't forget his son there. John had a unique calling to go before the face of the Lord. John's message was to give knowledge of salvation. So God raised up a forerunner to prepare people's hearts for Jesus. John's message was repent and be baptized. So he went before Jesus to prepare their hearts. And we've given the same opportunity. We've given the same task. To go and share the good news 
of Jesus Christ. And his plan of salvation that's free and available for, for everyone. And during this Christmas season, as we relive the events leading up to that day, the day we celebrate Christ's birthday, and we think of the people that will be out of the ark of safety, that doesn't have that personal relationship with Jesus. It ought to just give us a, a deeper burden to go out and to share, share the good news. Share what Christ has done in our life. Share what Christ can do in, in their life. He's a way maker, a pain taker. His name is Jesus. He is the horn of salvation that God raised up in power and might and come to us as that babe in the manger. He's our redeemer. He came as a babe in a manger, but yet he's the king of kings. He's the line of Judah. And he offers that plan of salvation for each and every one of us. God raised up a horn of salvation for you and I. Let's pray. Father God, we God, we thank you for, for just that gentle reminder. of why you came into this earth. We needed, we needed a savior. We needed someone to go alongside of us and 